Remember Sarah? For a very long time, Sarah felt hopeless and alone. Until one day, she met a social worker from a local NGO that works with young female sex workers. The social worker introduced her to a center where she could receive free medical care, psychological support, legal aid, and referral to other services. She also told Sarah about her rights as a survivor of gender-based violence and the laws that protect her from further abuse. Sarah decided to visit the center and was amazed by the kindness and professionalism of the staff. She received treatments, contraceptives, and counseling. She also joined a group of other young female sex workers who shared their stories and learned how to challenge the harmful norms and attitudes that fuel gender-based violence and sexual and reproductive health inequalities. And for the first time in her life, Sarah felt empowered and hopeful. She decided to leave sex work and enroll in a vocational training program that would help her find a decent job. She also became an advocate for other young female sex workers, raising awareness of their rights and needs among the community, the media, and the authorities. Sarah is one of the few lucky survivors out there. Unfortunately, there are many adolescents and young women living in slums across Nigeria who are not as lucky as Sarah. No doubt, more work needs to be done in addressing the issues of gender-based violence and sexual and reproductive health limitations. To break the cycle of violence and vulnerability, there is a need for holistic and integrated interventions that address both the root causes and the consequences of gender-based violence and sexual and reproductive health issues among adolescent girls and young women in Nigerian slums. Some of the solutions proposed by experts and practitioners include establishing one-stop centers for survivors' treatments where young women like Sarah can receive medical care, psychosocial counseling, legal aid, and referral to other services in a safe and confidential environment. Ensuring swift justice for survivors like Sarah by setting up more family courts for fast prosecution of gender-based violence cases. Publishing offenders' records every month as a deterrent for others. And sensitizing the police on the rights of survivors. Restructuring the support service network and referral system by improving the coordination and collaboration among state and non-state actors involved in gender-based violence prevention and response, such as health providers, law enforcement agents, civil society organizations, community leaders, and the media. Using World Health Organization standardized manual by health providers in responding to survivors of sexual and gender-based violence to ensure quality and consistency of care. Raising awareness of various laws to prosecute gender-based violence at state, local government and community levels to increase the knowledge and confidence of survivors and their families to seek justice. Implementing gender equity and holistic behavioral gender transformative programs to challenge the harmful norms and attitudes that perpetuate gender-based violence and sexual and reproductive health inequalities among adolescent girls and young women and their partners. Targeting young female sex workers for health interventions as they are a vulnerable group that faces multiple forms of violence and discrimination. The story doesn't have to end with Sarah. Together, we can save millions of adolescents and young women living in slums across Nigeria.